using Game of Thrones characters, let's try to memorize the order of 52 randomly shuffled cards. The experiment. The experiment will be divided into three parts. First, we assign a Game of Thrones character to each card. Second, we need to be able to see a card and instantaneously associate that card with that character. And finally, the primary experiment. Shuffle the cards, look over them to create a mind movie or journey, and then put them face down and see if I can recall the order from memory. The purpose. Does the memory technique suggested in Unlimited Memory by Kevin Horsley work? And how easy is it to apply it? The book's examples obviously don't use Game of Thrones characters, but instead uses a combination of the number system and journey method. If you're interested in learning more on that, I made a mind map summary of the book. Here's an example from Kevin. Imagine a king bashing down your door and entering your house. He finds some ham and duck to eat in your fridge. By remembering that, he memorized five cards. Clubs matches with K sound, spades the S sound, hearts the H sound, and diamonds the D sound. Instead of associating each suit with a sound, we'll instead associate each suit with a house. Spades will be House Stark. Hearts will be people associated with Targaryens, or primarily Daenerys. Clubs will primarily be Baratheons, and Diamonds will be Lannisters. If you're actually using this technique to count cards and gain advantage in card games, I suggest you create your own list because the association will make more sense to you. But I'll quickly explain my reasoning for each card. Let's start with the Royals, Kings, Queens, and Jacks. This was surprisingly harder than I thought it would be. Even with the house associations, if you take Game of Thrones and look at certain seasons, the kings and queens are different, so I just went with whoever came to my head first. For spades, John as king of the north, Sansa as queen. For hearts, Daenerys as queen, and Khal Drogo as king. For clubs, I went with Stannis, the one true king, and Selyse, which I call the hanged queen. One tip from the memory book is to really make the visuals interesting, so unfortunately, I'll probably imagine her as hanged for all the mind movies. A little gory, I know. Anyways, for diamonds, we have Joffrey, the bastard king, and Cersei as queen. For the jacks, I decided to go with the hand of the king or queen. So Tywin Lannister for diamonds, Davos the Onion Knight for clubs, Tyrion for hearts, and unfortunately Davos is taken, so we'll just go with Arya as the jack of spades. Okay, from here, it got pretty tricky, because numbers are just numbers with no real meaning. So what I had to do was assign the meaning. Let's go from ace to ten, and I'll go in order of spade, hearts, clovers, and diamonds each time. Ace is their house animal, so I went with ghost, drogon, a random burning stag, and a random lion. Two is the house's main character's best buddy. I went with Tormin, Missande, Shadow Stannis, and Joffrey's crossbow. Three is the second best buddy. I would have loved to include Gren and Pip, but I feel like that's a hard character for people to remember, so I went with Dolores Ed, the final Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. Then Grey Worm, then Renly Baratheon for clubs, because when I think about Stannis' buddies, all I could think about was Shadow Stannis and Renly, so yeah. Finally, Joffrey's other best buddy has got to be the Iron Throne. So number four was influenced by a language I speak, which is Cantonese, four sounds similar to death. So I went with a significant death in the house. So that's gotta be Ned Stark. And for hearts, I really debated between Viserys or honestly a whole lot of other characters because most of them died, but I went ahead and chose the Burning Witch since Daenerys' rebirth was a special moment in the show. For clubs, it's gotta be Shireen on the stick. That was gruesome. This could have been Robert Baratheon as well, but I chose Shireen instead just because it's easier for me to remember. And finally, we got Tommen, the king who fell. This number is definitely one that needs practice because there's a lot of deaths in the show. Number five is easy. I went with the sigils of each house, since five looks like an S. The least memorable sigil to me is the Baratheon one, so I'm adding a storm in the mind movie whenever that card comes up. Six is a number that most people sort of associate with the devil's number, so I chose that to be one of my most hated characters. That would be for me, remember my opinion, Bran the Broken. Yes, I hate Bran. Next is Viserys. Then it got pretty difficult for the Baratheon house because of the lack of characters, so I had to include people that I just hated in general. 
and went with Ramsey Bolton, the baby killer. Diamonds was a bit hard. At first, I had it as Marin Trant, but then I figured I really hated Shay more because of her betrayal of Tyrion. Seven as in Lucky Seven, so I chose who I thought was the luckiest character. I went with Samuel Tarly, Dario Naharis because he escaped certain death by staying in Essos, then Gendry Baratheon for randomly being named Lord of Storm's End, even though it didn't make much sense, and Jaime Lannister for blocking swords with his golden hand. And just remember, I'm listing my reasoning so that if you chose to adopt this list, you have a better connection. 8 is my favorite number, so I just went with my favorite characters. For spades, I chose the Hound, because he was basically with Arya most of the time, making him an honorary Stark in my eyes. Then Jorah. Then I had to pull another fast one for clubs, and I chose Jack and Hagar. And finally, Bronn of the Blackwater. Nine is the smartest character. I went with Littlefinger, Varys, another fast one for clubs, Marjorie Tyrell, and Kyburn. Honestly, Olena is probably smarter than Marjorie, but I went with Marjorie because she had more presence in the show for me. And finally, the last number, 10, the highest number card. So I went with the strongest characters, Bran of Tarth, Sir Barristan the Bold, at least book Sir Barristan that didn't die in a random alley. For clubs, it's Melisandre, and for diamonds, the mountain. Whew. Oh man, that was a lot. Sorry if your favorite character wasn't in the mix, I just went with whatever popped into my head first according to the number and house. And with that, the first step is done. For the next step, how I practiced creating that association with the card and character was by first running through the cards in my mind and looking over a sheet that I created with a list of those associations. Then I practiced by shuffling a deck and saying the characters as I saw the card. I did this until I could spot the card and then say the character's name in a reasonable amount of time. For me, that would be about under five seconds. Littlefinger, John, Arya, Samuel. It took me a good amount of tries before I could actually do it within five seconds. What I'll do is I'm gonna put the bad cards that take longer for me to name on the right and then put the better cards on the left right here. From there, I'll practice using only the set that took me longer to name until that set becomes pretty much zero. If you're interested in exactly how I practiced, I'll link a behind the scenes video that contains all of my uncut practice footage. My initial time was three minutes and 37 seconds to name all the cards. My final try on camera was two minutes and 55 seconds. So that's an average of about 3.5 seconds per card, which is below five seconds. Okay, so while practicing, I figured out that Melisandre didn't really fit for the strongest. It made more sense to make this card Robert Baratheon, even though he is king. Now that I already established Stannis as king, I'm gonna leave him like that. Okay, two things that I feel I learned while practicing. One, I think it's best or easier when you actually just imagine the character. I'm only saying the names for the sake of the video. Otherwise, I just look at the card and then I'd, I'd see a storm happening and then I'd move on to the next card then I, I'd see Ramsey doing something. Let's say he shot Rickon in the back or something. And then I, I'd move on to the next one where some visual memory of that character plays out. I personally think it's a lot faster. And I think if you guys use that instead of saying the name out loud while you practice, you'll have an easier time with this whole process. And with that, step two is done. Step three, the challenge. So I spent a few minutes shuffling the cards, playing speed 2 with myself, and making sure it's mixed as best as possible. Then I lined them up. I decided to try to go for 5 different story sets to imagine, so that would mean 10 or 11 cards in a set. Let's lay out the cards like this for you guys to see, and let's also leave a stopwatch in the camera view so that we can see how long it takes before I have total success for my first time doing this. I'll keep trying until success. Alright, let's begin. So for my first try, it took me about 34 minutes to come up with two different stories instead of five stories like I planned on. And it took me six minutes to recite the cards with the story out loud. To keep this video from being too long, I'll go over my third tries story with you guys. But I wanted to share what I learned from my first two tries before that. One, it's much easier to remember groups of people doing something together than it is one action per person. For instance, in my first story, I had Kyburn 
put on a golden hand onto Jamie. Then Dario crashes through a window and tries to attack Jamie, but Tywin blocks his attack with his own sword and then stumbles back and bumps into Tommen, who then falls out of the window tackling Stannis. That's one action per person. And although I do like that story that I came up with, it's slower to do that compared to a part you're gonna hear in my third story, where I had Sir Barristan appear with Tywin and Brienne, as well as Drogon carrying five characters. That's two actions with eight cards versus one action per card. For 52 cards, it makes a big difference. This wasn't actually said in the book, or maybe I missed it, but it's something I've gathered from just trying it. Number two, if I were to start over with the assignments, I would have made more of the cards events. For my first two tries, the storm was so easy to remember that I made the rest of the fives a snowstorm, firestorm, and a raining gold event. I'm sure you can guess which belongs to what, but the reason I changed this was because I kept forgetting about the Stark Sigil. Those are my best two tips from trying this experiment out. Let's go ahead and play for you guys my on-the-spot story that I made up on my third attempt. It's been 29 minutes since we came up with the story. Let's see if we can recite it from memory. I'm literally just gonna try this once so the cards are gonna fly around. If I need to, I'll put it back in order. Okay, we have Queen Solis hanged. Samuel Tarly looks in shock. All of a sudden, a whole bunch of gold falls out of the sky. And then on that gold is Dara Naharis. The gold falls, he rolls. First, he removes his face, and now it's Arya instead. And then he sees Joffrey hiding behind this tree, kills Joffrey, and then Renly is telling Robert Baratheon, we've avenged you, Robert, and Robert is in the grave. Robert says, good, now pour me some wine. And then Viserys pours him some wine as a diss, and then John slaps his hand away, says, don't do that. That's disrespectful. Khal Drogo is next to him, grunts. We see a crossbow in his hand, gives the crossbow to Grey Worm. Grey Worm starts, Grey Worm gets onto Ghost, and then they ride. All of a sudden, <clears throat> Tommen falls out of the sky, and now they're riding together. And then they are stopped by a Jorah, who has now avenged Queen's son by slaying the Burning Witch. She's on fire. And all of a sudden, we see Bran and then Varys riding on a burning stag coming in. And then they ram into, uh, they ram into first Jamie, then Marjorie, then Ramsay, and then the hound completely stops them. All of a sudden, we see a helicopter come out of nowhere with Sir Barristan, Tywin, and Brienne. From here, I believe we see Drogon blow up the helicopter. Boom. Sorry guys, you know, they're spinning. We don't know what happens to them. He, he, Drogon just blew fire at the tail of the helicopter, so they're spinning. They might survive. And then on top of Drogon, we see Shay, Queen Cersei, then Tyrion, and then the mountain. And then we see Daenerys standing on top of the mountain. They're in the skies. And then we move the mind movie to the ground where Davos is saying, do we really have to do this? And he says it to Tormund, and Tormund says, do we have a choice? And then Tormund looks at Bronn. Bronn says, you know, something about Lannisters and then shoots them with a scorpion. Kyburn looks in approval. He's happy about that. But then all of a sudden, after they shoot the scorpion, Missande appears out of nowhere. She's floating, uses the force um, with some fire. So she casts like a firestorm and then that knocks the bolt into the Iron Throne. Boom, here we have the Iron Throne. And then we have a storm up here. So that would be five of cloves. A storm appears. And out of the storm, we see Ned Stark. He's now sitting on the Iron Throne. And then beside him are Littlefinger. Um, it's Littlefinger. Oh crap, oh crap. Ah, got it, Ed. Littlefinger, Littlefinger, and Ed right there next to him. And then a snowstorm all of a sudden appears. So it begins snowing. And then we have Sansa walking with her two escorts, Gendry and King Stannis. And she says, hey, I see my father. And then Stannis removes his face, he's actually Jacken. And then all of a sudden a Shadow Stannis appears next to him. And Shadow Stannis morphs into Shireen, who then morphs into a lion. 
boom. No mistakes. Um, so of course this, this has to do with my association as well. As long as I have my association down, every card should have been, you know, I could easily say that um, seven of hearts is Dario, for instance. Um, so I only named the characters, but because we did experiment part two, which is the association, the characters are basically the same as the card if I have instantaneous um, recall. That was definitely shorter than before, I think, a little bit shorter. We came up with a much more memorable story, at least for me. It was one complete story too. I mean, there wasn't really much to it other than a whole bunch of people together doing stuff, but I guess that makes it a lot easier if you have like characters grouped up. As long as you visualize it, it's, uh, it's good enough. So third time, I think I'm happy with that. The story wasn't as great as it could have been. I definitely could have made it wackier. Definitely could have made it more interesting, but you know, it worked for me. I went through the cards. Well, actually I made the first part of the story with the 17 cards, recalled it, and then I did the rest, and then I recalled the whole thing after that without like refreshing myself on what the story was. So if I were to guess, this is also what Kevin does. Like he creates a memorable enough story only once, and then from there he, he's memorized the full thing. This is gonna have to be it. It was fun doing this, definitely. It's really stretching your creative muscles and your focus as well. And it's a, it's a fun challenge to do, just to try out, just to have fun with it. But it does take a good amount of time. I think if you give yourself a week and try this out, um, you can definitely do it. That's pretty much what I did. I started this project about a week ago and this was the result of it. It was fun, um, but I think it's time to move on. Oh, I just kneeled for 40 minutes. There it is, guys, my third story set. Of course, 29 minutes to memorize the order of a deck of 52 cards is not very practical, but the whole point of this experiment was to see if it was possible to use this technique with Game of Thrones characters and to see how easy it was. Even though I've only practiced for about a week, I can say with confidence this is not something you can do with ease. This was my first time ever memorizing the sequence of 52 cards, so I don't really have any baseline to compare it to, but I'm pretty sure it would be much harder to memorize a random order just based off of numbers and suits. You can watch me struggle with coming up with the stories in my behind the scenes video if you want. It'll have the entire process uncut. I learned that it takes a large amount of focus and practice for parts two and three. Even part one, the assignment part, can be treated with much more care. I may consider practicing some more just for fun. Let me know if you guys want to see a video where I try to do this in say less than 10 minutes. Apparently Kevin can do this in about one minute and that's pretty insane. More of the story, these memory methods work only if you put in the time to practice them. But there are fun ways you can go about doing it. For me, it definitely felt more like a fun challenge than it did a chore. Once again, if you're interested in learning more about the memory methods, you can check out my mind map summary video or the book itself. I'll leave links in the description. Let me know if you like this type of video by giving it a like and sharing. I definitely had fun making it, but I know it's different from my usual content. So I'm curious about how you guys feel. If you really like this video, you can learn more about how I created it on Patreon. Also, if you like listening to people talk about movies, TV shows, and fiction in general, check out my entertainment channel that I'll link below. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.